Good morning, afternoon, evening. I'm not Odie Harris, I'm William McRae, and you're about to see a video that John Huntington and I shot of Odie Harris at his home, and we made this film in June and September of 1988, and then this is, well, actually May and September of 88, and I went back there yesterday and had a talk with him. And what you won't see much of, don't get too angry, is not many pigeons in the air, simply because the technology we've got for this, frankly, won't capture the fast wing action of pigeons. I've seen a lot of videos, and so far, they haven't done any of the pigeons justice. But Mr. Harris has kept rollers since 1916, and a lot of the best lofts, both in Britain and in America and Canada, have some of the blood of his pigeons in them. And I hope you can get something out of this. We sure enjoyed making it. I know all enjoyed being with it. We'd like to thank him for his cooperation. And without further ado, uh, on with the video. Thanks a lot. Well, John, we'll go see you Hello, at Bill. home. Yep. This is Mr. Holdy Alice's home, 44 Ryman Road. John? Hello. <laughs> Hello. That's Mr. Hody Alice himself. Hi. Uh, how many years have you bred and kept rollers then? Uh, <laughs> well, I don't know. I've been with them all my life. Like, uh, uh, born with them mm -hmm. uh, from 1916 and been with them all ever since. Have they always been in your family? Huh? Your dad kept them. Well, he kept, no, he used to bang up the garden with them, and that's how I suppose how that's how it's quite bad. Mm -hmm. uh, been brought up with them. Mm -hmm. And his father spoke about them before. Like I say, with Richards. He's all man had them before. And they used to go up to. Uh, um, mm -hmm. and, uh, that's Bill Richards. Oh, Bill's all man. Mm -hmm. They used to go up in Pony and Traps yeah. and get the Kinber. Kinber. Yeah. That's where they used to go and get the, uh, some good pigeons, kinder. And that's how it was. Was that the part of Birmingham you grew up in? I grew up in Harvard, yeah. In yeah, Harvard, yeah. yeah. Were there many good roller flies around there at the time? Oh, yeah, stacks of them. Yeah. yeah. What, uh, what do you think were some of the best flyers in the 20s and 30s and 40s then? Well, as, uh, as far as I can remember, there was uh, old Richards, Billy Richards. He was a real good roller guy. Then there was a uh, um, Billy Armshaw, and then there was uh, Joe Thompson, and there was uh, uh, Bert Gould. Did you know Bert, Bert Gould? Gould? Yeah, very good. Then there was Alice Wright, and then there was Joe Edwards, Knock Mayo from Arvin, I used to call him Knock Mayo, and Rob Robbins. Robinson, mm -hmm. Joe Robinson. That was Alvin Lokes. But after, when, you know, when uh, Benson got to strike out of it, we, we come in contact with Old Skidmore mm -hmm. and uh, Bill Hodge from Quinton and uh, Ali Belfield and Ben Armour and them. We, you were well, practically the last person that knew Ali Belfield. And yeah, I think, so. I think so. Can you tell us anything about these people? <coughs> well, I had uh, Richards. I remember when I was a small kid, I went round to his place in Harbour, <laughs> which is nice street, and asked him if he got to sell. And he, he looked back, got a squinty eye here. <laughs> he, said, <laughs> he said, yeah, 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 you ain't got, you ain't, you ain't got nothing to tell. Tile feather. Oh, you ain't got nothing to tell, feather, he said. But uh, he played some real good pigeons. Oh, oh. Did the pigeons differ much between uh, Belfield and Richards then? Did they? Yeah, yeah. Were they vastly different types? Yes, yeah. Different altogether. Were there many bell necks and stuff like that about them? No, Richards is now. They were all little small pigeons with pearl eye, right, white pearl eye. Mm -hmm. And that was uh, like a smaller headed pigeon. And that was beautiful little pigeons. But Belfast pigeons are more bolder looking pigeons, bigger heads, 
more bolder, you know, mm. more quality in the eye they seem to be. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm. Mm. Who, who do you say the, the tightest, fastest rows? Billy Richards, the tightest Billy. and fastest, yeah. yeah. But the deepest and very fascinating business was Belfield. Mm -hmm. That was, I could never forget Belfield's business. When I used to go with old Bill and, and see them, they were sort of on the top of a big sand, like a big sand hole at the bottom. And you could see these bees roll down the sand hole. Mm. <laughs> you could see them from the top. You could look at them down as they're rolling down the sand pit. He was actually above them. And he saw them roll. We were above them. Oh, you could see them roll down that sand pit. Mm. I'm sure it was a sand pit or a bowl hole or something. Mm. But he looked all sand to me. Yeah. How does the uh, pigeons of today compare with, with Billy Ridge's pigeons oh, of yesterday? No, no, they ain't no good now today. Not compared with those pigeons, are you? Years back. Yeah, yeah. You know, you get a few isolated pigeons that just come to the same standard, but they're not, you don't get the, the amount and the quality of them. Mm. Would you, uh, how many birds, rows do you have in your bloodlines? Are the same as Belfields and Richards? Are you? There's Belfields, uh, Billy Richards, as a uh, A slight touch of old wires is white cock. And they are my father's guns. Mm -hmm. That's what that's all there is. Mm -hmm. that's all, yeah. You've never inter intercrossed the, the four strains then? They're all intercrossed, interbred. Yeah. 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 And you can, like when you know the pigeon's background, and then you can more or less breed to what colour you want. Mm -hmm. As long as you know the background of them. Yeah, yeah. Did uh, Scoobmore's role differ in any way, did they? Well, and that was mediocre's like, that was like in between Richards and Belfers, they were. Yeah. And they consisted of Belfers and Richards uh, towards the finish. But when I was a, a youth, I used to go to Bel uh, to, uh, to um, Skidmore's, and uh, that was before Belfers' business got into them, and also Richards'. Uh, they were good rollers, but they didn't seem the, the real quality of, of the other two. Yeah. But after the years, when Pensum introduced uh, Richard's pigeons to them, they were better pigeons. <coughs> and, and, uh, you know, Belfields and Richard's was the best pigeons as, that he finished up with. Yeah. And they went off to uh, Willis Ward from Scotland, they did. But before they went, Billage, who was a close friend of Skidmore, kept two back. He was there when Noel Skidmore died, he was. Oh, yeah. And he kept a red checker badge cock back and a red rose wing then. And I tried and tried to get those pigeons all village. I couldn't until I got in booze one day. <laughs> <laughs> Up in the King's Highway, Quinton. And, and I got him tiddly and when he's coming bobbling back, he says, hey, he says, I've changed my mind. He says, yeah, I've been having them pigeons. He said, I'll let you have the pair. He said, I'll let you have the youngsters as well. He said, there's four youngsters, and you're going for a fiver. And I bought the last. Yeah. But I lost them all. Every pigeon I lost. Yeah. Every one. And the last bloke to see those pigeons up, it was Pencil. When they come over, with that bloke, Al, I used to call him Al. Did he come over with a bloke named Al? Bill did. Four million, huh? Ah. Uh, was he in Italian? Was it in the war? Was he in Italian? That was. I don't. That know. was before '65. That was. Mm. That was a time before, I think. Mm. Uh, and you know, Penton was there when he spangled and cleared up, and the red checker badge cock. Yeah. I've never seen him again. I lost all the I lost all the young. Yeah. And it's a funny thing, that that spangle and that checker badge cock, they was a black self. A red checker white wing, a dun badge, and a red checker badge. Mm. All different sort of colours. Yeah. And that one pair. And old Jim said, if you ever get a pair of pigeons, he said, they keep breeding the same all the time. He says, ain't much good. Mm, it was good, too. Mm. Old Jim said. Yeah.
your spangles in when Bill next models come through them then, through that line? They come from uh, the red checkers that come through Critters in M. Oh, excuse me, what was that? Mm. Mm. Uh, they most of the riches is there. Because all riches just to be a lot red checkers. They got white into tiles. Oh, yeah. But Skidmore at that this particular time, they got some uh, pigeons there that was crossed in between. And now we had that, uh, when Pentam introduced that done in, the done in, you know, the self done in. 1613. He, crossed, he, he put that to a, uh, that done in to a spangled cock, which was a cross between Richard's and Skidmore's. And he read a black model in out of him. And in 1937, old Jim gave me one of those pigeons, a black bottle. Mm. She was a terrific role. And all these pigeons I've got now, I've got that blood in them. Oh, yeah. That slide blood in them. And she was a terrific roller. But when I was in the army, the old man lost her. But he got a stack of young ones out of her before you did. Before she went? I reckon she went to the cloud, yeah. Do You know the tar splash mealies you've got? Yeah. Who's bloodline of those? Are they? They're, they're all into bread like they're all, all close bread. And that was luck that I bred them, uh, really. It was only like a fluke, that was. Yeah. They come like, um, they got a bit of that dun breed in the old man and years back. And they got a bit of skidboard in them. And a bit of uh, Richard in them. Oh, yeah. They are. Because Richard used to breed these black splash red checker badges. Ah, so, yeah. And that's where them black spots the were originally from. Through, yeah. Because Bertie Goo bred some of those heavy splashed ones out of a, out of riches and stuff. So Bill Benson sent to America with a slightly done cock, was one of them. Oh, yeah. And that's where, mm -hmm. them, that's where they come from. Mm -hmm. Really riches is. Those heavily splashed in the tails. Yeah. Black splashes. Yeah. And it crossed him with the blues. The silvers and, and mealies and duns, they, they come out of quite nice. They got the black in them as well. Yeah. Yeah. How well did you know Bert Gould then? Oh, oh blimey, I knew him when I was a kid. In the 20 year old Bert. I, I used to go to Bertie Gould when I was a kid. And they fed some real good pigeons eat, old Bert, uh, in the 20s. Yeah. Of course, old Bert, he used to lose the marriage in anything. The snow, the fog in anything. He used to lose the damn thing. <laughs> but he'd always get up to the black country or, or wherever and, and, and get and Tompkins. He used to go to Tompkins a lot. There was Joe Tompkins and Elijah Tompkins. That was a big hero of Bert's when I spoke to him. You know, he uh, really liked Elijah's pin pigeons. Elijah and Joe yeah. Tompkins. Yeah. Uh, Old Bert Good was always up there at the pigeon. Mm. And uh, he, that's where he was to get most of his pigeons. Bill Benson, when, you know, he was highly complimentary of you. Did you know him very well? Did he live near you as a, as a lad? Oh, Bill? Yeah. Oh, well. When I was a kid, old Bill moved into Arvin from Ladywood. And uh, I tell you, he come to live in, in Tenor Road in the cottages. Then he, with races, then he moved into Vickery's Road with races, and then he moved door, next door one to us in Victoria Road, and went in for Red Badger of Langford, Billy Langford from, oh, yeah. uh, from Bearwood. And I suppose seeing all these roles in Harvard, he, he, he got fascinated with them, and he went all one way from there. But he was all, always. Uh, interested in these red badges. Yeah. He always had a fascination for these red badges, which was only bloody tumblers. Mm. And competition and competition was like uh, mag trizzlers. Yeah. Ah. In the end, you know, it mostly Bill Benson but mostly had selfs and checks. At the finish? Yeah, at the finish. And uh, Ah well, I don't know much about them. Mm. Well is this I just wondered how I don't know. You know, when you were made for the colours, do you make the same, you know, colour to colour, or do you class the colours when you're making yourself? 
Do you like them all? I like them all. They can be good pigeons. Mm -hmm. It's the breeders that breed. It's not the pigeons' fault if they're now good. It's the breeder. It's the bloke who's breeding them. Yeah, yeah. It's not the pigeons. It's, <laughs> I mean, they don't. They can't produce if you don't know what you make them do, do they? That's quite correct, yes. Hey? But if you, you showed me, if you put me a kit of pigeons in front of me there, I bet you a pound to a penny, I've picked the best pigeons out. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I and that's not that bullshit. Too. That's not bullshit. Mm -hmm. uh, you can put a hundred pigeons out there. I bet you a pound, I'll pull the, pull the best pigeons out. The, the pigeons that are working? So best rollers. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you what, what? now what colour you put out there, whether they're creamy, yellow, slaties, Reds, blues, blacks, or whatever. I'll bet you I'll pick the best pigeons out. Yeah. The best rollers. Yeah. Yeah. I noticed something there when I was with some of your birds that they were very short in the keel. Did, did you brief this specifically? No, you, you get good pigeons in short curls and also uh, longer curls. But you'll always find the best pigeons that are a bit deeper in the front here. Yeah. And they taper off like an apple. Talk, yes. Whether it's short or whether it uh, goes below the bent bones. Mm -hmm. As long as they got that nice apple body, it's like deep as the front and tapers off to an apple shape. Like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See? I've seen good pigeons with long keels and short keels. I don't like pigeons with a flat keel. No, I don't. Because it's like you've been on a raft in the water. Yeah, like this. Uh -huh. But a, a proper ship, he's got a, he's he got a strong, way through. He mm -hmm. his way through. Same with a roller. Yeah. If he's got a good strong curl, he cuts down straight. But a flat curl pigeon, he'll twizzle and do anything. Yeah. Like a raft in it on the water. Yeah. You know when, when everybody describes a champion, what is a champion in your eyes? you look for one yourself? I'm not, when I look at a champion, I'm not looking for colour or anything like that at all. I'm only looking for my experience, what I think is right. And I look, I want to go look at a pigeon, and straight away I know it's a good one. And it's, it, it, I suppose it's either bred in you know, or it's, it's uh, Use like you. Mm -hmm. You've been at it that long that you can pinpoint them. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. If you're not sure of it, if you're not quite sure, then handle the pigeon and pretty, make sure by handling it and all that business. What about the near, Ollie? The feathers now. You can't go by feather. Because yeah. the wider the feathers, the stronger they fly, the stellar they get. 
If you've got like a, a more narrow, narrow feather, you'll find the pigeons roll more frequent than a pigeon with a wide feather. Mm -hmm. I know a couple of people that agree that are quite good flyers too. But if, uh, I noticed all Richard's pigeons years back, and they have weak feathers in the second disc. Mm -hmm. Weaker feathers. And they were terrific rollers. You know, yeah. consistent and really tight. But the Belfield's pigeons, that was void of stronger looking birds, stronger looking feathers. Yeah. They were good deep rollers, but I was inclined to fly too long and get some. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. But, but uh, watch this pigeon, we're weaker in the feather, in the second especially. Mm. You know, you could play a bird like this, and that was the best roll. It's more mm. free. How old do you like a bird to be before it comes onto the road? Three, like three years is a piece of time. Three years? Three years should bring you to his prime. Oh yeah. yeah, I mean, I mean, as a youngster. Oh, younger. A youngster. Oh well, I've had one come out as a squeaker, had been a terrific roller, and stuck that way. And survived. Yes, uh, I'd have done bad then. When old Bill Penton come over, uh, he then got out. He had one egg, and she was about to lay another, and she come over my head, and I said, "Oh, blimey, Bill, that that pigeon's gonna roll egg back out." And you know, she went, she cocked her horse to roll. I said, oh, blimey, she rolls, she's, she's a dead one. She rolled like that. Yeah. But she didn't. She tumbled once. Now, she was, old Bill said to me, he said, that's the best, more, most intelligent piece I've ever seen in my life. It was a little done by Jen. And she was born in 1947, she was. Mm -hmm. And I think Bill came out with about 48 or something like that. Yeah. And that, that then was, was there. And, and that, that end's got this, these pigeons blood in it. Oh, yeah. That dumb bed in there. Dark dumb bed in there. What is the, the common average yours then to get into the rope, youngsters? <coughs> well, uh, the early it all pigeons. depends. Uh, uh, they should come out a bit early, but uh, it's all bull about these pigeons, the later pigeons that uh, turn out as the best or not. Because I had one three years, and I didn't keep her because I liked her. Mm. And she come and roll after three years, mm. and she kills the bloody self. I do find it interesting, Ollie, though, that, that you said that a pigeon will be at its best after three years. Three years. But I think they do, time. indeed. They do improve as they gain muscle structure and they strength. Get, the best ones, they get sensible. Yeah. Indeed, I am. Yeah. But, but I've had good pigeons, like, come out young as Quakers, and be real good pigeons, and Bob Brenners as well. Yeah. The squeakers, real good pigeons, and you've had them come out later, so you really can't tell. You really can't, yeah. can't pinpoint them. Have, have, you had, have you had much success with late developers in as breeding pigeons? Ah, of course I have, yeah. and early breeding pigeons, yeah. so you really can't pinpoint them. Well, you don't think that, I mean, some people say that if you breed from birds that roll too early, that you breed a lot of roll downs. No, of course you don't. You don't believe no, that? No. If you know how to feed them and fly them at the proper times when the weather's right, you, I don't think you can go wrong. Yeah. I mean, it's ridiculous to knock pigeons up in, in such weather as uh, the pigeon. You, you're just wasting the pigeons. Oh, yeah, it's a waste of time. So you've got to use your love for them. You've got a tricky, tricky, uh, a tricky breed to, to master, really, and those two guys. Yeah. Keep them. Uh, how do you Supple. feed your, uh, your flyers on? Do you, do you practice a low, low protein diet? Yeah. Barley and stuff. Yeah. Wheat? Yeah. Barley. Yeah. Barley, mainly. Yeah. Like, these pigeons have, have always been out here for flying a long time. So, therefore, you've got to use your love, and if you've got a competition coming up, you've got to knock them down on the protein. So, therefore, if they're that type of pigeon, they're going to fly and fly, you've got to knock them right down and fly them accordingly, like two or three times a week instead of every day. Mm. In fact, you wouldn't have them to keep them on barley all the week and fly on the weekend. Yeah. Provided they've been flat pretty regularly all the way through. Yeah, yeah. And they should fly 
Because you're not coming out of the ship, you're straight up. Because they won't flush as long as you're not coming down on the barley. Mm. You know when you're looking for the bird for stocking, what age do you look at for the bird for stocking? If I get a blooming right pigeon that rolls as a squeak and he keeps it pretty good till the next year, he's a stock pigeon for me. Mm. Or if one comes out, if I like a pigeon and I hang on to him because I know he's going to roll, and he comes out two years after, I'll beat up him, but I'll put him to a pigeon that's rolling pretty quick. An early development. An early development, you know. What's your ideal kit size then? I don't know, the best, uh, the, the least busy to fly, the more they're going to roll, I think. It's mm. the when you've you got like youngsters. If you fly a few together, they come out quicker than flying a big kid. Yeah. Because a big kid, they fly, fly and fly like racers. They keep on flying round and round. If you're flying a small kid, you let them start to tumble and rollick. And now it's almost all that rolling. Mm. Do you tend to give anything to a kit before a competition to to increase the roll? To increase the... Uh, <coughs> well, I, I used to give them years back. The night before, I knocked them off. I'd give them either bicarbonate of soda in the water the night before or I used to give them quinine and iron okay. it's surprising how the pigeons work on that bicarbonate of soda the night, the night before or quinine, quinine and iron crystals but I doubt whether you can get the quinine and iron and, and then sometimes, it depends whether you've been feeding them on all the week, if you've been allowing them down on barley, you could give them an hour before you knock them up. A cup full of MC. Before you knock them up, an hour before. Or an or a cup full of red rice. It depends on whether you've been feeding them on before. See, barley knocks them right down. Then the amp is very hot and the, and the uh, rape is very hot. The sudden change the system starts on a rolling. Mm -hmm. Do you feed uh, a young kid any different from an old kid? Do you feed the old kid any different? No. Just made up the same. No, in fact the old kid wants knocking down more than the young kid. Yeah. You know, you can lower their protein right down. The old kids you can. The young, young birds you gotta have a little bit of uh, uh, protein until they uh, mature properly and then they're gonna come down the same as the old ones. Mm -hmm. You know, would you, would you think it'd be a good idea to give better prizes, you know, to encourage tighter, faster individual pigeons? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, you do. Yeah. You like I, to I, think, I think yourself. That to get the quality back to these rollers, certain blokes such as yourself and Bill and myself, and perhaps Bob Brown, I don't know, but the blokes that are really genuine blokes that uh, only concentrate on the quality of the roller is to get together and form a little sort of organisation that you all give some watching and buy a good sofa for individuals to fly off for. And you know yourself that all the people I'm talking about only know what the good rollers are all about. Mm -hmm. And they're honest blokes, they don't twist and they're honest blokes. And that's the only thing that'll bring them back again. Because you know yourself, you've seen pigeons win these flies that you wouldn't pick up out the street. <laughs> you wouldn't beg them. <laughs> it's right, isn't it? It's quite true. You wouldn't beg them. And the only way to get them back is to do what I just said. 
get together for a little organisation, good sort of thing, and fly up for that, mm. and work it between yourself, and then in time you'll have the other blows start to creep round and get in, try and get in, but don't have them in unless they're really honest, genuine blokes. Mm. It's the only way I can do it, because years have gone by when I can remember, there was none of this business of twisting at all. They used to know who Biddings had won. I've but quite often said myself that the mayor town They made know who Biddings had won. The best and if that bloke was twisting, they used to finish with him. Mm. He's out. Mm. So he never, he never did happen. He was always on his blocks in them days, the, the early days. And there was none of this commercialising these Biddings either. I know I was a kid born. Riches and them, they used to work together. I don't know about Riches, he wouldn't have anybody have any, but Skidmore, Belfield, and them used to work together. Because I was a busy, they used to say, I'll have a Santa Road trip, and vice versa. Mm. And that's the only way they used to keep on pure. Mm. But if you start commercialising, making a lot of this, this money like sportsmen are now, he, he, he's gone. Well, it demeans the sports. He's gone. He's gone. Same. You know, when you, we get back to, to one subject, you're on about the wing, you know, that you prefer to see a narrow flighted pigeon. No, yes, yeah. And that it rolls faster. Mm. I found this quite interesting because a lot of people like to see a good cover, a wing cover, you know. Yeah. You, you don't. What do you think about the tail then in, in, in the roll of pigeon? The wake of the feather, the better the roll. That's how I've always been. The stronger the feathers, the seldom the roller. If that young one comes out good and sound when he's a baby, and he's got a big white feather, you'll never see him hardly tumble again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He was seldom. Never see him tumble again hardly. You look at these weak feathers and uh, performing regularly all the time. You know, you can pick them up and uh, you can bend them all over the place. But these strong presidents are like tipplers. Mm. That's very interesting. And you'll find out that these these tipplers do originate from rollers or tumblers as a bit of starter. It's only that interbreeding from these pigeons of big feathers they they, they fly and breed out them. Mm. Breed the roll out them. Do you think the tail has, has something to do with this stop then? Do you think you know As long as they got a good strong one. That's all they want. Yeah. A good strong run. Do you think that the uh, the velocity of the bird in the roll denotes the finish of the roll? I think that's. And I still think it's the run. You do. As long as they got a good strong run. So the stop, the stop signifies a the good velocity. Good strong run. Yeah. I think it's that good one. Run. It's not the feathers at all. It's the run. It's the body structure. Mm. It's nothing to do with the feathers at all. Yeah. You see the, the York and the, and the Kestrel, uh, they, have, they have float like this. They have stick float like that. Well, every time. Mm. Now, if you ever get one down, look at their feathers, you just compare them with a pigeon. Mm. See? Yeah. Uh, uh, the Kestrel or the Orc can stand still like that in the air. You can float on here like that. Yeah, they do, don't they? Well, you look at that, compare it with a pigeon, a roller, and they're different all together. Would you uh, would you breed from a roller that, that doesn't roll in correct style? Say a roller, it says it has plenty of velocity and, and depth, but rolls to one side, and, you know. Would you use that bird in stock? It, it uh, rolls what? Say, say it, you know, it was a good fast roller, a deep roller, but it rolled to one side. No, they're no good. You, you wouldn't no, use them still? No, they're no good. Would you use a pigeon that, that rolled deep and fast and, and didn't come out of the roll correctly? Would you, would you use no, that? No, no. So in other words, any bird that showed you an air fault, you, you wouldn't use no it still? No, he's no good. No. He's got to be a good sound solid as well. Yeah. To be any good. And then the, in the days gone by, when you talk about bird gold and riches and so on, did, did you often swap birds in 12 one of them? Did you exchange birds? Uh, the only uh, bloke I used to, uh, 
I'll let Bertie go down one or two. And I had one off him, a little silver name. But I'll let him have two, two of them badges, which he done pretty well with them. I think I'll bat it and Portman was absent. When you see what he's bleeding up on there, he's screwing back a bit. Uh, Skidmore, I had a red checker cock up him and a blue body then. And uh, I think it was 1948. And I told him I'd let him have one up, which I did. I didn't spangle him, it was. And she couldn't pretty deep, but uh, I don't know, old Jim never. Old Jim had never, <laughs> had never say uh, it was good or it was bad. He never used to say, you know, <laughs> no bloody good. He was wrong. <laughs> Shall we go inside and have a look at some of our, that is, all these birds? Okay. And he looks a little scrubby, I don't say. <laughs> <laughs> the beauty. Let me roll. Oh, this is this is your older bird kit at the moment, is it? Oh, there you are, yeah. Yeah, another brother that may take a while in the back. Oh, yeah. That red end. Yeah, that's the one. This is a sister there, take a bag. There. Yeah. She's terrific, she is. That's that one. Some nice mealy badges there. This black mottle that's just come to the front, striking bird. Very deep, very deep. Well, that's off that silver ball in that is. Oh yeah. And that mottle cock I told you, I'd back from from uh, Aberdeen. Hello. Oh, It's the pigeon we're talking about, this blue bird. I can vouch for that. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You get that task wash mealy on the middle perch there. Yeah. Let's get it. There you go. Down the next on me. That's splash of the splash of the I don't see. That's a nice one. That's a pretty head. I like that little mother. Oh, the black one. That's the nest, right? That little silver ball. Is it? Yeah. Ah. Where is it? Oh, he must have gone in. He's gone in for the wall. <laughs> He's gone in there somewhere. <laughs> 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 like a medium splash. Yeah. That one, there. Open the blue ball in, which will be just that wide in there. Yeah. There's a good black badge in there. I like that blue badge there. It's only as big as far as it is. Yeah, it's a bit longer than it. Are all these spangles related here, Ollie? I'm filming these yeah, at the moment. Are, yeah, they're all related. 
They're beautiful pigeons, as far as I'm concerned. And I'll tell you, I've handled these, and they're very small in the hand. Yeah. You like this young one? Let's go. Let's have a look at this today. Hey, come on. Make a star. There it is. <laughs> hey, get back out of there. Look at this head. Like gun and all this And after that blue badge, they all blue Yeah. The first pair was a nice blue badge and a blue cell. And then there was this pair. And then she laid again. They were a first first step and they wouldn't stick up. Oh, no, just take it out of the silver, wouldn't it? Yes, I'll take that one. It's packing up, please. All right, so we'll take a look at him. Got a gun in there. You got him. Go on, then. Hey, over there. How many do you... I mean, you must not breed too many like this, Ollie. That's quite a remarkable pigeon. Well, I've just run in two. Well, another one I didn't was a nice pigeon. Yeah, it was. And there's uh, any of the other penguins that are funny colored bugger. <laughs> I'll show you in a minute. Have you got him yet, this cup? Well, if he dazzles your eyes any time and the glare becomes too much, just let me know. Oh, yeah. Well, I suppose John could take him off your hands, too. Oh, well, I suppose so, yeah. Yeah. Well, they all went in. I bet mainly, they Mainly for the color. Well, that's not good enough. I should want him for performance too. Well, looks like you got another sale, Ollie. Bad hens hey. like when you get a chance. Well, she liked this one. This what is that? Bad. Yeah. You can't get him any better than that. Yeah. Well, I like the pigeon. Didn't she's the. Yeah, lovely, lovely, rich, rich black. She is. That's like I was trying to see in Cullig used to breed something like that with Whittingham. Whittingham? From Worcester, yeah. Yep. Used to breed that like that. There's just one question I'd like to ask you, Holly, before we go any further, before, before Bill starts. And that's the question of the black mottles uh, that was at Billy Irons. Could you tell us a little bit more about those? Yeah. How we came to to get them and how they're created? Yeah, well, I think I did mention it before that this uh, black mottled cock, the uh, grass neck cock, that was uh, quartered be as bees bees moors at Warsaw. Barrett picked him up when he went to find one of his lost pigeons, and that's where these mottlings come from. But that was definitely Belfield. It was definitely Belfield's pigeon. Mm -hmm. You know, come down from Belfield. These are the ones that Barry Shackleton got? Yes. Um, Barry let uh, Billy Irons have some of that breed. See? Yeah. And uh, I let Billy Irons have some of the Amelia's and he crossed them in. And that's what those pigeons were that Billy at uh, Shackleton had. And they bit all these black mottles and, and pale Amelia's. So he crossed the pigeons in from uh, Bill Barrett, these black mottled down from yes. Belfield, and then he put some of your done badges. And the mealies in there. Yeah. And they did these, uh, they were like a very pale mealy, mealy, mealy stuffs, mealy balls, and mealy badges. And that's shackled in that, and a lot of those breed, that breed. And they weren't good ones, very good. Mm. But uh, what happened to them after? I did hear that. Um, John had, John had had some. John Huntington, yeah. John had had some of them. And uh, somebody said he had them pigs. Had them stars. Yeah. So. You know, Bill O'Callaghan of Sheffield has got a nice family of those too. He's got some of them. He yeah. does indeed. And, and some of your pigeons. Yeah. Yeah. So he got some of them. Yeah. And they were good rollers, no mistake about it. They were good pigeons. Some of the old fashioned sort. Yeah. Mm. But Belfield's pigeons, they were the, the deepest I've ever seen. And for the quality of them, mm. I was really good. Mm. But Richie just pigeons, I was 
more tighter and shorter rather than what it was. Were they, were they smaller than smaller, these Richard's pigeons? Smaller pigeons, pigeons smaller heads than Belfield's. Belfield's pigeons got more, like, bigger heads, I was like, a um, bit more stolen than, than Belfield's and uh, Richard's. Mm. Bel Bel uh, Belfield's was a bit more stolen. Mm. Which, blimey, that was, that was pretty. They were both good. Um, Did you ever cross the two families together, yes. the Richard's and yeah, Belfield's? Yeah. And they come out all the way. Yeah. Did the, who, uh, do you think they were more like the Richards birds or more like the Belfields birds or was it a bit of a mixture? A bit of a mixture. Mm. Mm. Did, I think Bill Penson crossed those too. Yeah, sometimes they come out like Belfields, sometimes they come out like Richards. But there's like a mixture most times. You know, the grizzles. Yeah. Uh, the red checkers and the, the mottles, they breed the grizzles and all that. But they must, they must be fishing. Of course, you know when they, when a good pigeon gets in the wrong hands of people, he spoils it. Got to be in the right hands to do any good. Someone that understands, them. and there ain't many that do understand, is it? Now, would you keep the speed in the role? Now, would it's you? The cock, isn't it? It's the cock that uh, can. If you got the cock, a good cock, they'll put him with half a dozen hens and keep on crossing them back to the cock. It's the cock that counts for the quality of the roll. I've always said that, like, anyway. You, you're right, but I must say, I bought a blue white wing hen from you earlier in the year, and I paired it to a blue white wing cock from you, and I produced two excellent young birds this year. So far, they look really good, and I can't help but think that hen's got something to do with it. They're very regular rollers, too. Oh, but how we get the cock? Yeah. He's off that uh, blue badge hen. You know the one I want about. Ah, yes. Blue badge hen and the old blue badge cock. Ah. So they're related, those are. Yes, they are. Closely related. Mm. See. Mm. So there again, I just said that the cock, you've got to have a good sound cock. You put it off into the ends. And if you put those ends back to the old cock, mm -hmm. and that's it. You know, the quality's got to be there in that old cock. I think John and I are in somewhat of an agreement that there are more good hens than good cocks. So of well, course, they're faster, yeah, they're faster rollers, yeah. 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 Have you found the same thing? Yeah, they're good faster and tighter rollers, but the cock is the, is the mainstay. He's got the quality of the hen. If you're going to pigeon the rolls solid for about eight yards, a good sound cock, mm. regular, mm. that's the pigeon you want. Mm. And if you keep crossing them back to that cock, yeah. that's it. Yeah. And then if you do want to try, get a crust to put with them. You're always working back to that cock. Always work on that cock all the time. And if they don't produce any, then that end you put back to that cock is out. You, you took it out. No. Yeah. How many seasons do you do you think it, it takes to, or how many youngsters to, to, to test well, out a season? Say about stock? three years. About three years. I know you wasted three years, but you might not, not waste it three years. You might have done good or you might have done bad, but it takes about three years, and then if, if it's not good, you out out that in. Would you agree with that, John? Well, I would, yeah, years. in a lot of aspects. I always say that if you're going to create a strain within a strain, you must work on the cock line, yes. but you can also get a good lot of good end lines oh, you by can. following the end. Yeah, you can. You know. But you can gamble that related to that cock or that blood every time. I wish they'd relate to that cock. Some, somewhere along the line, I reckon they'd relate to that cock. Well, they've got to be, haven't they? They've got yeah. to be. I, I reckon that with the polygamous mating system which you're working on there, that you're going uh, line breeding, cutting out the unknown parentage by going back to the cock, yeah. getting everything down to a single parent mm -hmm. lineage, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. Well, I bet if you look on the, the background, those, those ends that you're going to put to that cock, I bet you a pound or a penny somewhere along the line, perhaps well back, does that relate to that cock? You you work back on it. Yeah. I mean, I can work back on some of these pigeons, and they work right the way back. Just to, to, to uh, old Belfields and Richards and and uh, and they they relate in some way to certain pigeons. Yeah. Mm. I know old Howard Macaulay would say the same thing. 
Da sa da vas te gote pa preen, ne, pa go da vun se is pejin do pa to. O jo, pa is to jo. En dan pikte pejin er jo pen. En dan vun se to pen die, en dan pikte pejin er so bolas to mal vun. En dan pikte jo pen do pen, ne. If I look through the back behind that pigeon, I bet you it relates to something. Yeah. It's got the quality there that runs back to pigeon traps I've had from the old time. I put a pigeon and it's the expression in the, in the eye. Sweet. Expression. Is it still recording? Yes, it is. It's it recording is. now. Oh, okay, sorry. You see, now this is this pigeon. I could, I could pick them out anywhere. This is pigeon. That's all the same type of pigeon. See? And that's why he used to kill a lot of uh, these pigeons because they didn't come up to his standard by looking at them. The experience that he had, he would tell what a pigeon was in the nest. He used to, he used to put them in the bucket of water, stack the young pigeons that he didn't want. That's why he never gave any or sold any pigeons to anybody. He kept to himself. He wasn't going to take a uh, people to ridicule him. He'd rather put him in the bucket. Yeah. And that was the only bloke he relied on was what it was a uh, set um, fellows. Or, uh, fellows, Western fellows. From up to seven. But that's all the same type of pigeon. Everyone, they got a little white pearl eye and a nice big round pupil. A large round pupil. These show pigeons are shown today, they got them little tiny red, little pure Like pills. a pinprick. And they are puddled, they are definitely puddled. By puddled you mean them, mud? If you start flying them, you'll see them, they're scattered, they're all over the many place, those are. And it proves in human beings as well. You look at human beings and animals, they got that big round pupil, they got the brain. The little pupil, pupil pigeons are all human beings. And not to be telling there's a big round purple pigeon. Now that's interesting. Now, now, what do you, I mean, the, the racing homer fans here talk about eye sign. And yeah. if you look, I mean, expression and eye sign are different. But I mean, you'll see some pigeons, and I've been out in your pen this morning. Some of the pigeons have what I would call good racing homer eye sign. They've got that circle of correlation, little yeah. jagged edges and different colors. Yeah. You know, that the, the the pearl eye, I've got sort of like a bluish um, violet kind of ring around it. And they, the orange eyed, yellow eyed ones ha have a green one around it. Now, do you have, I don't know if you look for that when you're going to pair up your pairs or whether it just came along with the, with the whole show. I like a pigeon that's got a clear cut pupil. Mm -hmm. A big round, clear cut pupil. Mm -hmm. A large one. Mm -hmm. That's all I go for. Yeah. So as far as I sign, that just comes along with it? Yeah, with the races, it's a different kettle of fish. Yeah. They're yeah. different pigeons all together. They've got to come long distances. Yeah. And they've got to have that, that I sign. Yeah. With but rollers, they've got to have that big round pupil and the expression in the eye. Yeah. Yeah. You, you handle your good pigeons. Then we can roll sound and solid for about eight yards and stop dead clear cut. You handle it and look at the eye and the head and the shape of the body and the, uh, the compactness of them. You study them and when you go to anybody's place, they'll pick them out like that. Yeah. That's the pigeon I want. I've you said that, and I think we're all in agreement, that good, tight, fast spinning hens are more common than cocks, but the, but a good cock, and Bill Penson said this, is worth his weight in gold. Oh, cocks are, but yeah. Do you not? If you study hens on the ground, they're smaller than cocks usually, and they're, and they're shorter in the body. And I wonder if that, I mean, I wondered myself if that's the reason why they're rolling faster on average than cocks. I don't no, know. I've seen some good cocks the same type of pigeon is the end. Yes, yeah, so that's it though. Short and cubby. That's right. And I remember the Spangle cock, I do Jim Skidmore. Spangle saddle cock. And he was a bit a bit long, a bit longer than usual. Mm -hmm. But he got a perfect handling body. <coughs> the body was right there. And when Ken Payne was up at our place at Darwin, 
and he's seen the pigeon dog, he says, what's that spangle in you got up there? I said, it's not a spangle in, it's a spangle saddle of cock. I go, Jim Skidmore. He said, well, he rolls just like a blooming in that does. <laughs> what a compliment. I said, That's well, true. he's a cock. And he was, and I tell you about that pigeon after. I sold it to somebody up, not up, um, Coventry, and Ken White copped on that cock. He grabbed that pigeon. He was a spangle saddle cock. And I bet you wish you had any back. <laughs> yeah, and he come, he come down from one of, the, one of Richard's pigeons, and one of Belfer's he did. A spangle saddle cock did. But he rolled just like an ant, fast as lightning. Now, he was a bit long cast, he was. Oh, he's a, he's a terrific role. But he was, when you say long cast, sort of long in flights and tail, but he's short got, body. Yes, he got yeah. a beautiful body, nice legs, uh, uh, shortish legs, mm. but he was a bit long cast, mm. just a shade, mm. that's all. Mm. But he was a good pigeon. Yeah. If you had a pigeon, say you had a pigeon that was terrific roller, Cockbill was a terrific roller, okay. good depth and speed and stop, and he was seldom, would you use him on a polygamous mating system? You know, would you mate him back to his daughters? Keep on using him, or just no, use him once? No, it's too seldom. No, it's too seldom. You know, if, if, if the pigeon cell like, did one a minute or something like that. If he's too seldom, I wouldn't, I wouldn't really bother. You wouldn't, use no, it, you wouldn't bother with him at I all? Might try him, I might try around or two up him, but I wouldn't, I'd see what they he produced, but uh, nine out of ten, he, he, they breed pigeons are seldom. Yeah. They sell them and very long high flyers, they, they, they live as a well so it would be shot of them really. Yeah, it would. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't say that if he used uh, a very frequent or a couple <coughs> of frequent ends onto him, just dip into him once and then <coughs> use a frequent <coughs> sun from him. And then perhaps he'd have a crossing back, to the youngsters back to the end. Uh -huh. Not to the cock. Not to the cock, uh -huh. yeah. If he was a good sound roll, that would sell them. Yeah. And she was a prolific roll at the end more consistent than a cock, you'd cross them back to the end. Yeah, yeah. You know, if he was a good sound roller, uh, not a roll down, a good sound roller, you'd pick up, cross them back to the end. And if they got too erratic sort of thing, like two went rolling, then you start to cross them back to the cock, uh, cock mm. similar side again. Mm. Sounds like good common sense to me. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's a, it's a tricky game, really, isn't it? It's, yeah. uh, it ain't all easy, these ro uh, breeding these rollers, is it? It's, uh, if it was, I think we'd all have good We'd all have good pigeons, aren't we? Yeah. And that's why it makes it so interesting. As you don't breed 9 out of 10 or 10 out of 10. No. And that's, uh, that's why I think they keep on coming up to try and breed something better than... Uh, you know, the normal Sometimes I think if you get one good one out of ten, that's the one that'll fly away anyway. It is. <laughs> and that's why I keep a lot of these pigeons in. Once I see them roll, well, <coughs> and uh, I think they're really good. I'll bang them around the back there. Into the stock well, you lose them anyway. Yeah. You don't get a chance then to see what you, you know, capable of doing. Mm. But down in Devon, you could knock any pigeon out. Well, you used to live in Devon, deep, you know, deep in the countryside. Yeah, that was. Anything, you yeah. knock anything. It's a mild climate down there too. It is, uh, and you could knock all your pigeons up, no bother at all. And you could fly any old or young. That's, that's it. But now you you've got to be careful around here. Yeah. With the with the ways of the weather. Mm. Well, you've lost a few this year anyway. But don't you haul? I think I think if you're a roller man, you've got to get accustomed to a few losses here and there. I bet I've lost over 60 this year. Must be over 60. Yeah. There's some old ones going and, and, and about 50 odd young ones. How many do you breed a year usually? I bet 100, about 150 last year and 200 this year. And uh, there's still one I've got left. Right? Yeah. But I've got rid of a few, but uh, I've lost a lot of that. Mm -hmm. Would you say in your rollers that one colour is more consistent in the roll than others? You know, have you, have, is your blues the better birds, or your blacks, or you know, your red spangles? Would you say theirs are the better strains? Well, no matter what colour they are, they all seem to be pretty good. Uh, you know, it all depends on the breeder, I think. If he knows what he's doing with the pigeons, it's up to him. You know, he can either spoil them or improve them. Mm -hmm. Top's a breeder. 
Mm -hmm. I think you can breed any colour, provided you know what you're doing. You can breed, like they say, yellows are no good, but I've seen some damn good yellows. Uh, a bloke at Blackheath that caught one of my uh, white cockhead or Jim Skidmore. Uh, I went to pick it up at, uh, at Ailes Owen, and this bloke got all the yellows by this white cock. And, uh, he knocked these yellows up, and they were some of the best yellows I've ever seen in my life. What happened to those? Uh, well, someone went to Tom Brown, mm -hmm. someone went to Nottingham, they went all over the place. And that was a bloke named Joe Walker, mm -hmm. from Ailes Army. And they weren't real good, good pigeons, they were good rollers. Mm -hmm. I mean, I tried it out, but that was, that was, that was, that was uh, a Chevy, you know, that was the yellow checkers. Mm -hmm. There was some rolling in them, but I got that many pigeons of others. I, do, I, I ain't got. I couldn't concentrate on them. I've, ne I've never had one come out of yours. I've never seen one of yours. No, no, no. I got that one. Different breed either. entirely. No, yeah, entirely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, you can't get any colour before you got the time to mm. concentrate. The blues that you're you're very rich in blues. You got a lot of blue badges. Yeah. You know, blue marked. Yeah. Where did they originally come from? I think the blues, the blues and the dons are the, the main stay. Mm. Where, where did, did they come from? Your father, or did they come from all? Well, my father got the, the dons and the blues. With the blue badge cock, we had off, um, the old chap had off a chap named Phillips, mm -hmm. the blue badge cock. And the dun badge cock, the uh, dun badge end, was one that was caught and it was um, found out after. It was one of Billy Rich, all Billy Richards' pigeons that he'd had from uh, up uh, King Swinford. Like. King Swinford. Yeah. yeah. That's where that come from. That's the way. And that's the only, uh, apart from those, that are all Skidmore's and... All the rest of them are Skidmore's and Richards. And Richards, and Richards. Ah. Yeah. Do you ever have any off Bill Penson? I know he sent some of no. 66, but you didn't no. get to use those. No. But all the letters I had off Bill, I've kept them. Yeah. And um, whenever he tries to argue with me, mate, I've got those letters. <laughs> I always yeah. keep the letters as important. Yeah. I've got the lot. Yeah. Have you got any old photographs and letters from the old time fanciers tucked away someplace? Have you got photographs of anybody like Belfield or Skidmore? Or no, I've got one of Richard, so I ain't got one of Belfield. Yeah. Because Belfield died pretty soon, didn't he? He got out of him. Yeah, he was in 38. But Richard's family was still in Ireland, they, they, they were still around. Mm. I mean, if I, I get in touch with them, I might be able to get a photo of all of them. Mm. And uh, a bit more information. One like. day we'll, we'll go down there we in the car. We have a good scare around. Wander around, around, drop in and have a, have a pint. Yeah. Yeah, because didn't Richard's family own a pub? Or? They own the um, Green Man. The Green Man pub. They come from Ladywood, the same as Penson did. But that was that was more business type of people. Yeah. I mean, Richards, Billy Richards, was considered to be, you know, possibly the greatest roller man. Oh, now, did. yeah. Now, what did he do? Did he have to work, or how did he concentrate so much on no, these? He didn't work. You see, the Richards, he got some money. They were silversmiths, really. But the uh, Ard Richards was a big buyer for this country. And the others was, was business blokes, I was in the silversmith's lab. But Billy Richards never worked, nor his sister Kathleen. Kate, I used to call her. Old Bill, they had this money down from the old man when they sold up in, uh, in this pub, the Green Man. They all had so much money. Well, old Bill and Kate, he lived on this money. Of course, the other two blokes was in business already, so I didn't bother to them. And old Bill lived with Katie. She was a spinster. She was a spinster. And they lived together. Mm -hmm. She had a heart attack and snuffed it, and old Bill died just after. Yeah. About the 30s, 37, or something like that, I don't know, something like, around like that. It was either 37 or 38, old Bill died. Yeah. Did you get any of those original birds when he died then? Did no, you? I didn't. Pensum and Ken Pango. Oh, yeah. Two other birds. Did, is this the birds that Pensum took to America with him? Um, I don't think directly they would, no. Not directly they didn't go. The 
youngsters or something. But yeah. Direct. Oh, he started off with youngsters from from Smith. Uh, yeah. That they are all direct pigeon thing, yeah. But pigeons are from Canada, I think. But you did get some pigeons from. Oh, from I, I, had, I had some of them off. Uh, what is sent back to Hard Richards? You know, Austin Fellows. Yeah. Because he was the only bloke that I would build trusty. And they'd come back to, to Tommy Richards, that was, Hard Richards. Plus the pigeon you mentioned that your dad got, the uh, Don Badge, yeah. Don Badge yeah. and, the, and, the, and the Blues. Mm -hmm. That's the only, that's the crust, only crust for them. But old Bill Richards then really re retired really early and just concentrated on pigeon breeding. And old Bill never worked Yeah, Billy Richards. He just flew rollers. He never worked. <laughs> what a way to go. <laughs> he was a dedicated roller bloke. Another dream for him. He used to, he used to uh, sleep, he used to sleep and and dream about pigeon. If he lost a pigeon, he'd go from the other, from Arb, and he'd go to the other side of Scotland for it. Billy Richards would. I remember once, when the wind was down our way, and all his luck come down, Benny Jordan, who's still alive, perhaps I don't know, he was a mate of old Prince, Bill Benny. I was down his garden, when all his kit come down, he caught about 17, I dashed up to our place, I caught four or five, and down come Billy Richards. And of course, we let him out of the back, and there was one stuck up in the oak tree at, late at night, <laughs> and he climbed up that oak tree. <laughs> That's that pigeon, but he, he missed it. <laughs> I went to grab for it, he missed it. And uh, he was a, you know, I can't describe him. He got a bus eye, he, he squinty eye, he used to look at him like that, you know. <laughs> and he could tell what, what so he'll have a good roller, man. Oh, he mm. was. He was. I reckon he was the best roller bloke I ever wished to, wished to say. Billy Richards. He lived rollers. Yeah. He, he, he entered in the roller, Arvin Roller Club fly once. But being that deep rollers, he never got anything. Yeah. All the ones that won was the tongue. The short tongue was. Yeah. He never went in again. Penton went in twice that time. Yeah. He never went in. Yeah. Old um, Joe, Joe Thompson, he went in the time too. He, he back there. Yeah. And uh, Joe Edmonds, he went in once or twice. He back there. Alice White went in three times. He back there. All the deep roll blows, totally back there. And then Bill started that uh, NBRC up then. Yeah. In 34. Yeah. The English NBRC. Bill Pensum started the English NBRC. NBRC, national it was. Yes, right? National Birmingham Roller Club, yeah. 1934. And the first blokes in was um, Otis Wright, Frank Shelton, mm -hmm. old Jim Skidmore, he got Jimmy, <laughs> uh, Ben Jordan, Bert, um, David Gowdy, I don't know whether he's still alive now. But that was about the first five in. Yeah. And then he got them other blokes and when he started to present, uh, put on these shows at these different places, they all, then they started to come like, you know. Yeah. And there was all these... Um, Did they ever have competitions? No, never had a, no, no, they all showing. That's a big show, but they all good rollers. When he first started, they all good roller blokes. But after a while, when Tom Brown got it, mm. he deteriorated a bit. Everybody was joining because it was half a crown. Only half a crown to join and ten and had ten. What's two buck for ten ring or something like that? Mm -hmm. Everybody was joining. Red Budgie Wallers and, and, and Magpie Wallers and what it is now I don't know. Because mm -hmm. Ken White's case, isn't it? From Coventry. I tried to make a list the other night of the ten just for speed, the ten fastest rollers I ever saw, but Thinking of two or three, can you think of two or three or four pigeons that, no matter who bred them, that really stand out as particularly good rollers? Can you think of any ones that stand out over the years? Well, uh, one of the best I ever bred in my life was a black badger Bill Ave in um, uh, 1937. Black Badger. Bill O. Benson. Bill Penson. Because I, I was living, I was flying on allotments the same time Bill Penson was flying on allotments. 
He was living in North Fair Road next to Joe Thompson, which was Joe's house. And I've read this black page, I've been checking what ring there, and they come off Joe Thompson's. Mm. Elijah Thompson's brother. That's right. Yeah. And this then, they couldn't get to fly this checker white ring then. So I had it. And I got it up, and when Joe Thompson's come down, and Bill said, that checker white ring then's up there. And Joe Thompson says, it's bloody well ain't, mate. And he only waited there till they check a white ring and come down, and he wouldn't believe it <laughs> until they check a white ring and come and dropped. She was a short passenger hour like she was. But they couldn't get up because she kept on doing it, see. But I got her up. And I paired her up to a red rose ring cock. And I read this black badge. And well, Bill ain't alive now, but if you were, he'd tell you the same. Oh, she was a she was a dream pigeon. She was all that past. You never see a, there's only one pin I bred like her, and that was a blue upside end. I let Adams have that. Yeah. She was a 51 and I bred her in 51. I let Adams have her because she wouldn't fill her eggs with the pennies. But she, he wanted to, he started up with these pigeons, and I let him have that other thing, and he lost the devil. This checker white flight you're talking about, Ollie, <coughs> uh, how did you get it back in the air then? I couldn't tell you. She just decided to lift with yours. Oh. I just fed her the same as I fed the others and then she went up with them. Yeah. Might have been a change change of uh, position on her. Mm -hmm. I just wondered if you gave her anything no, to, no, she just to make her fly. No. I have tried it with other pigeons, other pigeons with canary seeds and seeds like, um, I tell you what's one of the best seeds, uh, moor seeds. Moor, be a poppy. Moor seed, that's a little, little, little tiny blue, blue one, yeah. Very small blue seed. Yeah. That can get some. Or a silver mm -hmm. box or Mm -hmm. some box yeah. Well, I've seen your pigeons fly enough times to know there's not many that don't want to shift. Go <laughs> right up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Flying's not the problem. <laughs> but if you have any trouble, like you sit up a box or any of that more seed. More but seed, yeah. I've often looked at more seed and wonder what that'd do for oh, pigeons. Oh, so small. It's seed. poppy seed. Oh, it's a tiny blue poppy seed. Oh, I mean, get to they don't come very often, but I, this pigeon like the black badge hen that you're talking about, and the blue oddity hen. Yeah. I've seen them and people don't believe me, but a pigeon like that, when you look at them, when they go into a roll, they seem to shrink and they're they almost transparent. Yeah. They seem to go up again. Some people say they drop fast, and I maintain they barely shift at all. Barely move, so yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now, Portman was there at our place at Arvin this particular time, and that blue odd side end was up. He said, Blimey, that's the sort. He said, That's the sort of pigeon. Mm. And Portman's still alive now, yeah. and he tells the same. Yeah. He said, oh, blimey, that's the pigeon. Yeah. And she rolled as if she was going up again. Yeah. That's past. They just oh. about disappear, don't they? Yeah. So we are. I've stood in and seen pigeons like that. Yeah. Not very many. No. A few in your lifetime. Have you ever seen a, a, a roller roll forward? Roll forward? I've seen one, but they're not roll really. They've just got, flicked over they've, forward. They've gone down like somehow. Not really roll, but they've seen the gun down like that. I'll tell you why I asked the question. Myself, uh, Bill O'Callaghan and Graham Dexter were stood at, at Bill O'Callaghan's. And Bill borrowed this little end. She was a little dun, uh, dun bald. Directly she was off your directly stock. Directly off your stock. She came into a tight spin. She was a fast, she's a very fast, tight little bird. She came out of the roll, stopped dead, and they went forward in just one flip. Now, we all looked at one another with amazement on our faces. We had, all looked at one another and said, did we see what we saw? And that was definitely out of your stuff. This is why I asked the question, to see if you'd ever seen it happen. I've seen them do it, but not, not yeah. like you, sir. Yeah. I've, I've never seen I've it. I've had two do that, but they, they seem to go down. Mm. Uh, and one at the window. Uh, one, one is our, our bedroom window. He seemed to come forward like that. It seemed as if he did half turn and, and then dive down. And I thought he'd cast all the blood into his eyes and uh, just gone down like that. The deepest roller I ever saw that could, that, could, that could pull out that wasn't a roll down, you know, that was, you could say, sound, was that pigeon that I saw you breed down in Devon, down in Chabert, that had done splashed ball oh, cock. Oh, the cock, ah. 
Yeah, it wasn't deep all the way, it was. Well, I don't think they can get any deeper than that. Well, I've had one deeper than that, and he came over and painted Jim Skidmore. Yeah. And he was a check it outside in. And that was his album, and that was. And he come right out of the clouds, and he stopped just before there's a. Um, oh, blimey. One of those. Um, one of those nuts that they pick up. A hazelnut? No? Walnut. Walnut. There was a, there was a, a garden of a few doors up on the other side in Vickery's Road, and he stopped just above that, that uh, tree. And they check it outside then, and they come over a pair of Jim Skidmore's at it, direct. Did it do that more than once? He, do, he used to do it every time. <laughs> and so it get up to the clouds and go all that yeah, way. <coughs> yeah, and the next one I saw, similar, similar depth, was um, Peter Daniels up at um, Warsaw. Yeah. A little red checker by Jen. <coughs> she come down, it must have been. 400 yards, he said. Jesus. I said, hey, I said, look at this one. I said, it's coming all the way. And our Peter said, no. He said, no. He said, it'll stop. And he stopped. Now, I'll tell you who's got that pigeon now. <coughs> Young Wearing. Richard yeah. Wearing's got it. Yeah. Well, we went up to him to judge the pigeons like that in our club. <coughs> and old um, Richard says, uh, what's that one? What's that? What, what's that one? He said, oh, that's the, that's the young red checker badge, that is. He says, uh, he's the deepest soul I've ever seen in my life, and stops. And he said to um, Richard, he said, do you want it? And Richard said, well, he said, I've got plenty of other people. He said, but I will so I'm young enough it. And he's got it. Yeah. Does it come from your stock? I said, yeah, it has. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he's got that vision. Richard's got it. And to look at the pigeon, it's a beautiful pigeon, and the type of it, and the shape, <coughs> and all that, you wouldn't think it'd rather left this room. Yeah. It's beautiful, compact pigeon, <laughs> and a, a beautiful shaped head and everything. Yeah. And it comes that depth. Oh, it's easy, if I if I seen it in the show pen, yeah. I'd definitely give it a first prize yeah. because it's an ideal type of roller. I do. <laughs> Sounds like in the tennis racket to keep <laughs> it in the air. <laughs> and what is better off it is a blue badge. By the way, the youngster, the father of it, he's off that red checker badge and I let you have and you let I, I was have it. Yeah. That's the father of these youngsters. He paid up the red yeah. checker badge in. He's got one blue badge, one red checker badge, and all the other meal is. All mailies, except them two. Well, it'd be interesting to see if they do that. Oh. Yeah. Well, he don't get much time to fly him because he's in business, so. Yeah. But he's got some beautiful pigeons. Yeah. Rich. He just bought this small old in. Yeah. And he just had a loft built, must have cost over a thousand quid. Yeah. Twenty compartments for breeding them on the side, twenty in the other. And these flying compartments in the in the middle. It's like a dream life. Sliding doors, two ivies each side. It is a dream place. Beautiful. I wish I'd go. <laughs> and uh, he ain't got the time to fly them properly. Yeah, what's the point of having all that money if you can't fly them now? Who had the best lofts then in the days gone by? Who were the guys that had the best lofts then? Sounds oh, like Bill Richards had the worst. He had the worst of it, then Skidmore. <laughs> <laughs> it was Skidmore, Belfield, and Richard had the worst lofts, the worst lofts are going. Yeah. Those three blocks, and those <laughs> the, it was the crack blocks. Um, <laughs> Billy Richards fed his, his old ones out the coal house, and he's, he got two little pens about that eye in the yard. It was only a yard. Pity just was up on the roof. And two little pens there for these youngsters and stuff. In the yard, I got it up on the house and then come down on the flat roof on the car on. And old Skidmore was two little pens, one up against the wall, and one he built another one, or well, had one board just outside that. And he was all enclosed with houses and bloody wires, you know, um, electric wires. 
and the whole bell field. We got uh, two little old shotgun pens with uh, felt round and we tied on them. So I don't want to make things anymore. And that was only uh, shacks like. Yeah. Now, I think the best uh, loft I saw when I was a kid was pensions. Yeah, I've seen. <coughs> and I bought I bought the the one I think the the good one. And uh, when I was on allotments, I bought this one and he carried it down with me. And we put it up. He, bu he built it all out of fish boxes. Mm. This pen, we put an ivory on it with glass and wire from it. Yeah. And that pen might be still there, I don't know. Yeah. I left it there mm. on allotments. But that was the best pen I'd seen roll the blokes out. Mm. It was Bill's. Because he was a carpenter, he could knock a pen together. If you, if you had everything you wanted, say the money was no object, what would you do out there for your rollers? I mean, if you were going to recommend to somebody, somebody came up to you and said, I'm a millionaire, I'm devoting my life to rollers, what would, what would you think that you'd need? And how many kits do you think you could fly? Well, I should, buy, I should go and buy the nicest place I could find where it was all open space in the country. Mm -hmm. so, like the Jeff, like Jeff, yeah. Have a place built up in the field, a big place, <coughs> have, have um, compartments each side and a runway through the middle. Yeah. Like um, Mazzarelli's got. Yeah. Mazzarelli's got the idea. The well of laughs, don't I should have, have a have like that. And I should uh, really, really go to work on it. Mm -hmm. How many kits did you fly down in Devon today then? That was, you had a few going then. I had uh, 120 in that one side of the garage. <laughs> to fly? <laughs> there were six compartments in six there. Six kits, yeah. And there were six compartments in the other side. Uh, that was 12? Oh, that was 12. <laughs> then I got the, the breeders in the other two parts, I don't know, like the, the big wire fronts. You were flying 12 kits? Were, were you flying that many? Oh. <laughs> yeah. oh boy, that must have been quite a... Well, I loved it. I did. I used to go up in the field. I used to lose the kit up. Go up in the field with the dog when she was around. And uh, I used to do a bit of work watching the pigeons, see a bit looking up and barking. And when that kit had come down, I used to knock another kit up. And that's how it went on. Yeah. All day, yeah, practically. But it suited me. <laughs> it would suit me. And I'd have been there now if the, if the missus hadn't wanted to come back. Ah, everything to keep the family together. It suited me at street. I was happy there. And she wanted to come back with this it business. Not, uh, what, was yeah. to do? what do you think, John? 12 kids? Would that keep you happy? Cool, oh, Jesus. How, how did you manage the 12 birds? Did you feed some to fly in the morning, some to fly in the night? Different times As of they day. come in, I used to feed them. And that was it. Well, just one, your, once a day each. Yeah. Just, just fly them that once a day. Up, the first kit up was the first kit up the next day. You'd have to feed them to fly about half an hour, would you? Is that what well, you they didn't stick up too long there. They went up with the other. They didn't have to fly as long as they do here. And I, all I used to feed them on was the stuff that that farmer used to give me up on the top there. Mm. He would say, come and clear it, clear it round the up, upper. And it, all it was was wheat barley, oats, and something crushed. It was something crushed, like uh, either oats or something, but it had something added to it. It smelled like chocolate. That's all those people used to get for breeding and flying. <laughs> ah, and they used to... They did well on it. They done better than what the buggers are getting now. Well, the air is nice and clean down there too, isn't yeah. it? When the almonds come down in from Nottingham, it was in the April, they got the uh, snooker on or something, and Biddy was by somewhere, and he come down with a few more, and he, he, he wanted to come and see the pigeon. And this, this particular day in the April, it was a beautiful day. I knocked them off. And I'm not a kid, that silver ball was in them, that one I went about it. Yeah, with my blue grizzle balls, yeah. And there was a coming like bloody yo yo's like that. <laughs> and he says, Can I come tomorrow and bring the missus? I said, Ah, of course you can. Exactly the same day, the next day, and they done exactly the same. Exactly the same performance they done. And he said to the missus, he said, "Come and have a look at these pigeons." He said, "He said, 
can, can you compare them with the one dollar? <laughs> and she says, no, I can't. And I was honest, if you ever to say that young man's bloke, I know he's still got visions, but he'd tell the same. Mm. He's never seen nothing like in his life. And they're coming like that all the time. Yeah. And the Orcs had some of those pigeons, by the way. Mm. The same pigeons, the Orcs had some of them. John Thompson come down just after. Yeah. And he'll tell you the same as well. Yeah. That was rolling just the same when he come down. Yeah. And that was in the autumn, that one. No, August, I think. Well, if you got all day to be with him, you've got the right spot. Yeah. But I think it was that feeling, that blooming rough stuff I do. That uh, oats, barley, wheat, and this, this crushed stuff. Because oats are quite good, you know, they, it's, it's, it's good stuff. I mean, you people yeah. eat them themselves, don't they? Well, I was there, I'd feed them on maize, they'd be up yeah. through the bloody clouds that yeah. were like hell. Yeah. But that stuff kept them just right. Mm -hmm. That uh, oats with the other kind of a lot of that stuff in that mixture we used to get the cows and the yeah. so. Thinking there's been a lot of progress over the last, say, 50 years in rollers. Things have changed over the last 70, really. I don't know if you some of it's good or some of it's bad, but how would you like to see it going? Say, you know, 50 years from now, where would you like to see rollers? Where would I like to see it? Yeah, I mean, what sort of state would you like to see the... What kind of way would you like to see it heading? What direction? The role of fancy. I like to see it revert back to the old times. Yeah, which is in the twenties, thirties, and yeah. mm -hmm. and just the early forties. Yeah. After that, it's going to deteriorate a bit. But uh, at that time, in the twenties and thirties, there were some marvelous bloody rollers of men. Yeah. Do you think yeah. what what's the main thing that the birds are lacking today? Do you think, by and large? Oh, they're kind of lacking quality, or do ah, yeah. they? Yeah. Lacking, definitely lacking quality. Mm. Mm. There's a lot. Of, I see a lot mm. of kits that are very active, um, quite good kits, um, but like but high velocity rollers are thin on no, the ground. They ain't got the quality. Mm. Now, when I saw an old mason, a George Mason, talk last year, that fly up, you know, these pigeons put up a, a marvelous performance. They put up more work than I've ever seen any deep rollers put up. Mm -hmm. They was rolling all the time, but he got about five good pigeons, real good old time pigeons up there. The good straight, fast rollers, and there was, I think there was three of them red checker badges. I'm not sure. I think there was three red checker badges. One Jamie, a light, a light, and with I think got done bars. Uh, I think it was always a, there, there was two light colours. Uh, one was a chain on that one, the other one was nearly all white. And there was five good pigeons they were. But the others was a bit baggy arse like. Mm. They weren't coming down so neat as they should. Well he's probably got the same problem that anybody else has, although oh, you, you yeah. you're afraid to lose all your best yes, ones out yes. or you fly them away. But there was uh, I never seen pigeons from deep rollers roll so so much as those pigeons. And you're going to get a block credit, there's no yeah, mistake about it. That's true. Well, I was there last Saturday night after the after the All England fly in the Midlands, and, uh, and he put up a what he calls his C team, yeah. and there were some very good rollers <laughs> amongst them, I'll tell you. He, he's a good bloke, though, isn't he? You got, yes. He, I think you've got you've grasped the idea. Yes, he's very good, he's very clever. Yeah. And, he's, and he's quite helpful to other people yeah, starting yeah. up. Um, he's a bit like you in that way. He'll help out a newcomer. Yeah, um, he does. He's not into it for the money. Yeah. And his missus is a nice woman as well. Yeah. Very nice. Now we need some quality in the sport. I was a laugh at uh, his big son. Uh, we was there. Bob Brown was there. Daryl. Hey. Daryl. Is he Daryl? A big tall and with a black hair, dark hair. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, he, old, old uh, George says, uh, "Go and get some tea." He said to this kid. He comes out with his mugs of tea and old Bob Brown goes up to him and says, uh, uh, You ain't got a drop of whiskey, have you? He says, uh, <laughs> He says, uh, <laughs> <laughs> And the kid says, You ain't got no bloody whiskey, have you? He said, I had to laugh. He said, You ain't got no bloody whiskey, have you? <laughs>
You gonna go with him, Bill? Yeah, I'm gonna go. This is the home of Mr. Hody Harris's back garden. The path leading up towards his pigeon loft. That's the whole Diaris method of putting pigeons in the air. Come on then, I figure. Is it true, Miss Harris, yeah. that you've got some very knobbly knees? <laughs> <laughs> It is possible. And then your legs go all the way up to your bum. It is possible. Where did these pale mealies first come out? Because you've got hens with splashes all over them and all sorts of things. And how did that come out? When did they start popping out? Well, I don't know. I've read splash things for a number of years. I'll tell you what they first first come out. I think we might finish yeah. this between as well as doing actually. I, I had a black model then yeah, or Yes. I had a black model then or Jim Skid boy in 1937. Mm. And he come down, a grand a granddaughter had a that old done in that went to America. Yeah? The one that Penson was always, you know, talking about. The old done self in. And this model then come out of that pigeon and one of Richard's is in a, a Belfield cross. It was like a spangled cock. Right. It wasn't like these dark red ones. It was lighter spangled cock. Right. Yeah. And this black muddle then, she could roll about 15 yards and stays a die yeah. every time. Old Jim, give me that in 1937. And uh, these questions yeah. come back, they come out of. A cross between that pigeon, a blue ball cock, and a dun bag. Yeah. That's what they come to. Yeah. Those splash things. Yeah. And if you put the certain pigeons together, they used to come every time. Do you like some of this? What is it? Because we're finishing it. Well, I'll show you. Carry on. You're, oh, 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 have, have some. Have some pie or something. Keep his... Keep his Keep your number of these going. I've got to look at my figure. You're okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's trying to ruin mine. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're okay. Yeah, if you haven't eaten, you're eating. <laughs> if Adams was there, he'd he, he, he have all been gone there. I'll tell you that straight. Yeah. It's yeah. all been gone that would All a lot. You don't tape, you know, don't forget. Oh, I'm loving it. I don't know. Tell it down, mate. We'll put it down. Like it's that, right. Yeah. No, it's right, does that is. If it, if, know, it, uh, if it be there, that all that lot there would have all been swept up. It'd be gone. Wouldn't it, Josh? I'm saying nothing. But you've got these very, very, very... I bred one out of your stock at home. <laughs> very <laughs> pale, pale. But they're okay. barless mealies. You know, they're, they're, they're what you call lavender in California. They're, the, they're almost oh, a they're white. They're that soft-coloured. And yeah. I've never seen them come from anywhere else. Yeah. Well, they come through the black side, yeah. Yeah. I got the blacks in them. Mm. I think you once told me that they, while you were in World War Two, your father said that they started coming out yeah. on your pigeons. Yeah. He bred, he bred quite a few of those uh, guns and mealies. Uh, and of course, uh, when uh, Portman was knocking about with Bill Penson uh, while the war was on, he used to come down to Bill's and they come round the Loch Ness a time or two and they must have been looking at the pigeons, my pigeons because after the war when I met with Pip Portman he says uh, he said you know he said I could have pinched all your pigeons he said I could have got your luck out with a, with a pin 
Ah, is that when we're lucky I got any silver? Okay, get out with a pin. How did he dad manage in the war to feed him? <coughs> you know, I mean, Graham was. Oh, blimey. He also had a gold medal, that friend. He went for six, over six years from RS, round the Lockmans, every day to feed them pigeons. And he fed them, he went all, round all the, all the grocer's shops, getting these peas, Tasmanian peas that, that you eat for human consumption, mm -hmm. pearl barley, rice, oats and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Those things were all on rations, weren't they? You oh, couldn't just buy it like you could do yeah, that. Yeah, until Ken Payne uh, sent, sent the old man a, a note around. He says, uh, you can get some corn off the NPA. If, if he's a member of the uh, Pigeon Club, he can get some uh, corn, mixed corn off the NPA. Yeah. So the NPA. The allocation it was, I think it was 20, and that's what's finished, no, you know, finished the month. But before he was, he was going down to the shops and getting everything to feed them on. Bread and everything. Mm. I know because <coughs> where I live, one or two fanciers, these were racing pigeon fanciers, mm. uh, they used to make cakes. Yeah. Bit of a pigeon cake, you know, out of more, mainly bread and other things, and yeah. bits of rice. And, uh, and then they used to break it up and crumble it and feed it to the pigeons, you know. That's it, with all the seed, and the seed and everything there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they, uh, they they only fed them so much, you know, and that's they only right. kept the very best yeah, of stock that, birds. That's right, yeah. Because they, uh, yeah. during World War II, like the government impounded most of yeah. the pigeons. But this Dunball cock, 1937 cock he was, fed up this blue button and Jim Skidden was. They produced some marvellous pigeons. And crossing one of those youngsters back to the Dunball cock, they bit them deeper, a bit deeper in the roll, but they had every one a good, good pigeon. And, and I've read two beautiful rose wings off that pair, and two blue balls. And you know that bloke, um, Goodby on the back? Yeah. I sold him one of them pigeons off that, off that pair, the blue ball end. He'd tell you the same. He's the best pigeon he's ever had in his life. But he, he come the old story that she wouldn't fill her eggs. So he said. Mm -hmm. But he had that one blue ball. This would come fifteen yards as straight as a die and stop dead. And he'll tell you the specs of two. He had an ear of one of them. And I lost a black check herself in. Um, of the same same breeding, but a different cock. He was a done self cock, all heavily black spliced. And put to the put to the blue one of the blue balls, they bred this checkered in, self checker. Well, I lost her one day. When I went, finally met up with this Goodby bloke, he got the black checkered in, the black eyes, and he he been been flying it for a hell of a time. Mm. I said that's one of mine that is. He said, well, you come here, so and so and so and so. I said, well, look, I lost her. Oh, that's one of mine. But he never offered me back. No. But she, she was a good bit in the black check or something. Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, when was it? Uh, well, it must have been in the 50s, I think. Or the 60s. He wanted some pigeons off me, and I let him have uh, four. And they did all them beautiful pale mealies. Mm. And he was winning with them in the show. And when. Adams and myself was going to Dudley to pick a pigeon up. We called in a good bit on the way. And Adam says, oh yeah. He says, oh yeah, I bet some pigeon off them. He says, no, he says, I ain't off them. <laughs> no, he says, I ain't off them. I said, you can't kid me. I said, I know the, what them pigeons are breed. That's all these pale mealies. He says, yeah, he says them ain't off them. Well, where was they off from? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but he's winning with them in the shows. Yeah, and he's bringing some blackens, uh, uh, some of these blacks out of them. But he, I'll tell you what he crossed them in with. Remember when Pensum sent some pigeons out to Ken Payne yeah. in 1951, I think it was. One of these pigeons was a black hen with a mottled head. And I've seen her often, she was a good pigeon. Bertie Good had it off Ken Payne, but he lost this pigeon. And uh, when I took all my riches up to Bloomers, 
of just Ailes Army on the way to Stanbridge. That black model was there. And you get all these very dark, rich blackens off them, off this end. Black, white wings and black badges a bit sprinkled. And you know, I said to uh, Bertie Gould, I said, oh, bloom has got that black end, you own that muddler. He went up and fetched it and fled it and lost it again. But when Bloomer packed up, Goodby and Pearson that lives not far from Goodby bought all Bloomer's pigeons. True. And he crossed all them pigeons, yeah. them black ones, up with these mealies, mm. and he's breeding some beautiful, oh, beautiful pigeons out of it. I saw Norman Pearson's pigeons in 1972, and they were first rate. I looked at them and thought, there's something good in these. Mm. And I measured him to you, John, you yes, never heard of him. And then they suddenly disappeared, I don't know what happened to them. Sure. I don't know what happened either, they yeah. just disappeared. He lived at the bottom of the quarry, didn't he? There was a quarry on the on the left and he lived there just down there. He's another one that flew like Harry Belfield, you know, his pens, his flying pens That's dropped right, right off into, into like a canyon sort That's of thing. Yeah. That's the person. But that's uh, that's where those um, pigeons of, of um, Goodbys come from. Mm. Mm. But I, I think he, he, he had some more about it and all well, after. Were there any other fanciers in the black country in that time that was, you know, of comparable quality pigeons? You know, other than Richard's Gould and, and Cole? Um, ben Armour, he got some good pigeons. Elijah Tompkins, he got some good ones. Um, the old bloke Taylor got some good ones, but he only got a few. But he was an old bloke, he was. Jack Taylor? Jack Taylor. Yeah, he must have been right. He old. was an old bloke, he was. 